Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game that just ended from the World Rapid Team Championship uh, in uh, Dusseldorf. Uh, it is Peter Svidler versus Daniel Dubov and it's uh, quite uh, quite an attacking game. You guys will enjoy this one. You guys have requested more Dubov games but also you guys have requested more Svidler games. So I thought uh, let's, uh, you know, uh, handle it by showing a, a nice Svidler versus Dubov game. So let's check it out. Uh, not going to spoil anything. Uh, Svidler, uh, Peter has the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3. He goes for that AT opening. We have d5 by Daniel and now pawn to g3. Sorry about that. Uh, thought I covered that before. Uh, g3, he goes for the king's Indian attack. We have g6 and pawn to d4. We have knight to f6 and now pawn to c4. Uh, we have c6 and now uh, usually uh, bishop to g2 is the common move here, but we have queen to a4 and this move has only been played a handful of times. Uh, D captures on c4, queen captures on c4, and now bishop to g7. So, okay, a few more moves will be played, and players will transpose into known territory, castles, castles, and pawn to b5. Now, what's interesting about this pawn to b5 move is that uh, Dubov already had this position. Uh, he had it with black, uh, he uh, faced it uh, against uh, Levon Aronian and Hikaru Nakamura, uh, but Svidler uh, also had it with black. He played it against Shakhir Mamedyarov and all three games, I believe, ended in a draw. So both of them are uh, very much familiar with this position, I believe. We have queen to c3 uh, and now bishop to f5. There is a game where knight to e4 was played, just uh, continuing the attack on the queen, and where, where a5 was played, uh, also a queen to b6 move is known, uh, but here we have just um, uh, bishop to f5 and and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, rook to d1. Makes sense to align the rook nicely with the queen. We have pawn to a5. Of course, Dubov wants to push b4. We have queen back to e1. Svidler now frees up the c3 square for his knight. And he wants to strike in the center with pawn to e4. And the bishop to c2. Dubov is being annoying with the bishop. Says, all right, you have to move your rook to a, a less a less perfect square than d1. So, okay, rook to d2 for the moment. Hindering the development of the dark square bishop. Bishop goes back to f5 and now knight to c3. Uh, now he's ready to execute pawn to e4. So Dubov stops it by playing knight to e4 himself. We have rook back to d1. Also the knight is uh, the rook is uh, attacked now. Rook back to d1 and now knight captures on c3. Probably uh, trying to be um, uh, you know uh, very much annoying with the bishop. If Peter captures with the pawn, then he's going to play bishop to c2 right back. So Peter captures with the queen and now pawn to b4. Uh, attacking the white queen and yes it is the strongest move in the position queen to b3 and now comes knight to d7 now it's time to develop um, uh, all the other pieces we have knight to d7 and now bishop to g5 putting pressure on this e7 pawn and dubov just moves it queen to b6 now bishop captures on e7 is not really a threat uh, if, you, if you capture this then a rook attacks bishop once the bishop moves you lose the e2 pawn so it's basically a trade of the e pawns so rook a to c1 uh, and now we have pawn to a4 winning more squares here on the queen side we have queen back to e3 and now bishop to e6 putting pressure on this a2 pawn so pawn to a3 and now dubov again being um, uh, well harassing that rook on d1 bishop to b3 we have rook to d2 and now okay you could play uh, something but first he wants to take care of the tension on the queen side he plays b captures on a3 b captures and only now rook f to e8 uh, we have bishop to h6, uh, Peter uh, continues with his plan, he wants to trade off the dark square bishops, and bishop to f6. We have queen to f4, uh, and now Dubov um, uh, tr tries to figure out a plan, uh, you could go for something like rook 8 to d8, uh, but he goes for knight to f8. He wants to play knight to e6 and chase away the black queen from such an active square. Uh, but uh, Peter beats him to the punch, he plays knight to e5, and okay, how does this change anything? Well, knight to d6 attacks the queen, but also knight to d7 attacks the queen on b6. Now, the question is, can you trade queens here? Uh, you, you cannot. If you play knight captures on f4, uh, knight captures on b6 comes with an attack on the rook. And now there's just no good move you could play. If you play rook 8 to b8, seems like you're doing fine. You say, okay, you capture my rook, uh, my knight, I'm going to capture your knight. But all of a sudden, bishop captures on c6 happens. And this bishop was crucial there. Um, uh, Duba would have used it to play knight captures on g2. So he doesn't have to worry about spending an extra tempi uh, to, to, to get rid of the knight from f4. 
And now, okay, you're just a uh, dead lost here. Your rook is hanging. If you play rook somewhere, you could play it to d8, knight to d7. Now, again, attacks the rook. Your knight is still hanging, and there's just no good move to play here. Rook b to c8 can be played. Uh, and now, okay, it does come with a little trick, because if you capture, uh, capture with the knight, then rook captures on d7. You cannot recapture uh, due to the rook on c1 being undefended. But you can just eliminate the bishop with check, and then after he captures, you just pick up the uh, knight on f4 for free. That's pretty much it. There's no way to pile up on the bishop on c6. Uh, so instead, after knight to d7, Dubov just goes back, queen to d8, and now uh, Peter eliminates the, the bishop with check. Knight captures, we have pawn captures, and now queen to h4. And okay, and now uh, Dubov's pawn structure is um, a bit messed up here, uh, but that's not uh, uh, you know everything that he has to worry about. Bishop captures on c6 is the threat. The bishop and rook are attacking it. So he has to stop it somehow, but uh, how could he do it? Can, can he play something uh, like bishop to d5? He can, but then e4 is, uh, is an automatic. So instead, we have rook to c8. Uh, Dubov decides to give up the c6 pawn, and uh, Peter captures it. Rook captures on c6. And here, there is uh, one very tricky line. Dubov is now just down a piece, and he will have to suffer uh, due uh, to Peter having the pass d pawn. But there is one very specific line that allows Dubov to uh, basically draw by force. Uh, and uh, he doesn't play it. I'm just going to show it to you as it's a beautiful line, and it starts with pawn to g5, sort of attacking the queen and stranding the dark square bishop on h6, and now, okay, where do you go with the queen? If you go to e4, then you go under the mask of the rook, then some knights there, four ideas are happening. Uh, so best bet would be to go queen g4, and now queen to a5. Also, the rook on d2 is now undefended, as we've locked out the bishop uh, uh, on h6. Uh, and after rook captures on z8 and rook captures, uh, what do you play? You cannot move the rook just anywhere. The bishop covers the d1 square. Also, rook to c1 check will be deadly if it lands. So your only hope is to actually give up the rook with bishop to e4. And here would, we would get a force to draw. A queen captures on d2. Now queen f5 threatening checkmate. And now after a few checks, let's say queen c1 checking to g2. You will have to stop checkmate with knight to f8, but now queen captures on f6, threatens checkmate, and now knight back to e6, defends against checkmate. Queen f5, knight f8, queen f6, knight to e6, and we would have a draw by perpetual. So just a you know, a spectacular line, I just really wanted to show this uh, to you. But queen to e7 was played, and now this gives uh, Peter just enough time to start that pawn uh, up the board. So pawn to d5 attacks the knight. Uh, and rook captures on c6. Of course, you're not going to move the knight. E captures, uh, D captures on c6. And now comes queen captures on a3. Here, Dubo is down a pawn. And if he can grab the a3 pawn, create a pass pawn of his own, then he's back into the game. But here, probably g5 was uh, his best option. And after queen to e4, now, uh, sorry, now you capture on a3. Uh, but still, queen to b1 will be played to um, sort of uh, uh, counter that uh, past a pawn. And now bishop can be played to e4. Your rook can come to d7 it's still a better position for uh for uh, peter uh but okay queen captures on a3 was played right away by uh daniel and now comes queen captures on f6 now peter is a threatening checkmate so queen to c1 with check we have bishop to f1 and now queen captures on c6 so dubov eliminates the pawn uh now the material is even and now he's ready to start pushing his a pawn but the problem is bishop to h3 now with the threat of simply eliminating the knight which defends the g7 square and then the threat is queen to g7 checkmate so is there is there something peter can do to avoid this well Queen to c1 with check, he will throw in a few checks, of course. Queen to c6 check, we have pawn to f3. Again, the threat is uh, the exact same one. Uh, and now queen to c7. This is a great attempt by... Uh, Daniel, uh, because now if you play bishop captures, then f captures, and the g7 pawn is defended, and now the a pawn starts marching forward. So instead, after queen to c7, uh, 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 Peter finds a brilliant attacking move, one that I have no doubt Dubo would play in this position himself, and that is rook to d4. Uh, now, again, of course, the knight cannot capture, it would be checkmate on g7, and uh, if you just start advancing the pawn, what's the real threat here? Well, if you start advancing the pawn, now that the rook is on d4, now bishop captures captures on e6 is a deadly threat because after f captures on e6 look at this rook to f4 with an unstoppable mate uh, queen to f8 will be checkmate once you give up the queen captures captures rook will deliver checkmate and there's no way to avoid this whatever you play it's the exact same checkmate queen to f8 will be played whatever move black makes it's uh, that kind of a position even if you play okay if you play queen to e7 uh, you don't go uh, queen to f8 you, you will first capture the queen and then deliver rook to f8 checkmate but 
the, the idea behind the checkmate is the same. So instead, after rook to d4, uh, Dubov tried to avoid this. He played bishop to c2, trying to be a little bit tricky. Uh, but still, uh, bishop captures and uh, uh, here, here would be very strong. But there's even a stronger move now. Uh, and that is, of course, the one that um, uh, Peter plays. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for Peter uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on paying uh, zero attention to what I was saying as I gave the solution away. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, Bishop captures on e6. So why does it work now? Uh, well, the reason is, of course, uh, that, uh, well, once f captures on e6, you will play rook to c4. This is what Dubov played. This is what uh, Peter played. And it was in this position on move 39 uh, that Daniel Dubov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Now you have to choose. You either uh, move the... You cannot move the queen from the seventh rank. You get checkmated. Uh, and if you just move the queen, doesn't really matter where. You could play queen to a7. Okay, it does look like maybe you're gonna be able to pose some threats here if uh, rook captures on c2 is played uh, but the threat now is not rook captures on c2 the threat is rook to c8 with the threat of mate in one and there's no way to avoid that rook captures on c8 will be met with queen captures on e6 uh, a nice uh, check fork here and if you go here then this is just a nice mate in one queen captures on c8 as the bishop covers g7 and if you don't if you block with the queen then it's just well, the same checkmate only in two. Queen captures on c8, queen will block, and now queen captures on f8. So very nicely done by, by Peter, eliminating Dubov like this. Uh, he uh, played very natural moves. Dubov tried to work his magic around Peter, but Peter, you know, wasn't um, uh, interested in, 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 in any, any of that um, uh, kind of chess. And uh, when uh, he gave him this opportunity that we've mentioned after, you know, this uh, queen to h4 was played, uh, uh, he just didn't found this crucial g5 idea. It, I mean, it's a, it's a brutal line. Of course, you do not find something like that in rapid chess, but that's why we show games uh, afterwards. They are played, you know, on the, on the internet. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other game that you've enjoyed from the second day of the World Rapid Team Championship, use hashtag suggestion uh, in the comments and I will definitely go over them. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to, uh, like to thank uh, Robert Bloom, uh, Andrew Woolley, uh, an anonymous person, GrizzlyChessFestival.org.gg and India Moon for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing uh, to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.